Hey, a friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Well, today is an exciting day, and that is because the latest update to Logic Pro, which is 10.7.5, has just dropped. And what it brings with it are, well, some features and enhancements that I really think a lot of folks are going to be stoked about. If you're a Logic user, this is another free update. It's been almost 10 years of free updates. It's been amazing. But if you're new to Logic Pro, you can always download a free trial of Logic Pro for 90 days. You can try it out right from the Apple website. And I'll include a link to the Apple website for Logic Pro below so you can check that out. Before we jump in, as always, please, please, please back up your current version of Logic before you update. As Apple does not house any sort of older versions of Logic Pro for you to download. It's entirely on you to back up your current version before you update. So you can backtrack if this current version is just not working out for you. It's super simple to back up your version of Logic Pro. Just go to the Applications folder in the Finder on your Mac, find Logic Pro, right-click on Logic Pro or hold Control and click, and in that drop-down menu, just select Compress. Once you've compressed your current version of Logic Pro, just create a new folder in the Applications folder. I just call it LP, and just drop that zipped, compressed version of Logic Pro into that folder. The same goes with your operating system. If you have to update your OS on your Mac, create a time machine backup. It will save you so much heartache down the road. Okay, let's jump right in. To start with 10.7.5, because of the double point in the title, it's a maintenance update. Typically a lot of bug fixes, but also comes with enhancements and improvements to the application. And we've gotten some killer features over the years in these double point or maintenance updates. Number one in our list that I'm sure is going to make so many people happy is that track stacks now allow an additional level of hierarchy. So basically, you can nest another level of summing track stacks within summing track stacks. So let's just do it right now. I'm going to select all the drum tracks in this session from the overheads down to my floor mic. And I'm going to use the key command shift command G to create a summing stack. But of course, you can always go up to track and go down to create track stack. Now we've placed all of our drum tracks inside a summing stack folder, which is really helpful for organization. We can close the track stack and that saves us a lot of space in our projects. But sometimes you wanna be able to combine several elements within a track stack into their own track stack so that you can process and mix those elements as a unit as well. In this case, we could process the entire drum bus with both EQ, compression, or any other plugin. But what if we want to process the snare top microphone and the snare bottom microphone together as well as a single microphone? Well, in that case, let's use shift command G. And now we've nested a track stack within our summing track stack. And let's do the same for the toms as well. And look at that. So now we can collapse within our summing track stack and just focus on the overheads, hi-hats, and kick. Collapse everything, expand everything. It is pretty freaking awesome. Next up is a brand new feature to Logic Pro that I'm sure you didn't even know that you needed, and that is the brand new free tempo recording button located right next to the record button up here in the control bar. Basically, free tempo recording makes it way easier for you to implement smart tempo in your projects. So instead of you having to dive into the smart tempo options and remember to turn off the click, you just press the free record button and it takes care of all those details for you, whether it's a brand new project or an already existing project. And I gotta say, it's a pretty interesting workflow. When we press this, there will be no metronome. We won't hear any of the tracks in the session as we're recording, but we'll be able to lay down our idea and then see how it can be integrated into the current project. So I wanna lay down a bass guitar idea that not necessarily has anything to do with the drum performance that's in this project, Let's actually take a listen to the drums real quick so we have an idea of where we're hanging. You know, so pretty up-tempo, we're running at a BPM of 150, but I have a slower idea that I wanna lay down. So let's record enable and let's lay down that idea. As you can see, every track in the project was muted. The bass guitar was soloed so I could hear just my bass performance. And once I stop playback by pressing spacebar on my Mac's keyboard, Logic introduces to us a brand new dialogue that says, hey, with this free tempo recording, what would you like me to do with it? Either Logic could apply the region tempo to the project, 
apply an average region tempo to the project. We could apply the project tempo to the region that I recorded or don't do anything. So I'm actually going to apply the region tempo to the project and we'll see what happens. Because we're using smart tempo in this case, Logic is letting us know that we can edit the smart tempo analysis of this region using the smart tempo editor. For now, I'll just select don't show. But if we now take a listen to this bass performance and the drums, let's hear how this all sounds. Isn't that so cool? And if we open up the global track lanes, that's because the tempo of the project has been adapted to match that of the tempo of my bass performance. And because all of my drum tracks have flex and follow turned on, that section of the drums adapts its tempo to match the updated project tempo, right? So what if we go in the opposite direction and let's have my bass performance adapt to the project tempo. So I'll record once again. In this case, let's apply the project tempo of 150 BPM to the region. Now let's check it out. And thanks to Flex, everything has been adapted to the project. And what's super cool is that free tempo recording supports both audio performances as well as MIDI performances. Next up is the brand new gain tool, which provides quick and easy adjustments for volume of your individual regions. And you can even see the waveform scale in real time with DB Precision. Now, the old way of dealing with gain adjustments of a performance is that you had to make a selection using something like the marquee tool. You make your selection, and then you go to the region inspector, to the gain parameter, and you make your adjustment. And while this is okay, it's a lot of back and forth going from this region to the region inspector so on and so forth, every time you wanna make a gain edit. So now if we go to the mouse click tools or use key command T, there's a brand new tool called the gain tool. And now when we select the gain tool, any audio region that we hover our mouse over suddenly has this new display that tells us what the gain is for that particular region. So if we zoom out, we hover over any of these regions, we can see that gain line is presented to us. So let's take a look at the base here. And as we drive down the gain or drive it up, we can see the waveform adjust. So I found a great way of using the gain tool is to set your marquee tool as the other command click tool. So when we hold command, we have our marquee selection that we can make. Once we've made that selection, we can then click with the gain tool. That particular selection has now been separated from the rest of the region and we can adjust the gain of just that particular region. So if we make a selection again, maybe here, and we can boost, and now we're making some serious adjustments to our performance. The gain tool provides the precision of the gain parameter from the region inspector right from your regions. Pretty awesome. Next is the brand new record MIDI plugin output. The output of MIDI plugins can now be recorded directly to your tracks, which allows for precise editing of the resulting notes in controller data. And you can even specify which MIDI plugin in the chain the MIDI data should be recorded from. So for example, I have this 60s vintage organ and this MIDI data is being provided by both the chord trigger and the arpeggiator. Now, prior to this update, when we record MIDI to our track, let's hit record and I'll play this idea that I have in mind. As you can see, we have three notes for the three notes that I played but this doesn't include any of the other notes in the chord from chord trigger or any of the arpeggiated notes. So really you were pretty limited in terms of how you could fine tune 
your MIDI performances using the MIDI effects plugins. But now, if you click on any one of the MIDI effects plugins, there's now a new option to record the MIDI data from this MIDI effect plugin to the track itself. So let's select it after the arpeggiator. Let's get rid of this region and let's now record our idea. As you can see, the individual notes of that chord trigger performance of the arpeggiator have now been recorded to our MIDI track. So in this case, we're including every note from chord trigger being arpeggiated by the arpeggiator, but perhaps we don't want to include the data from the arpeggiator, just the data from chord trigger. Let's give it a try right now. And as you can see, there are the notes from Chord Trigger, but not from the arpeggiator. Additionally, there have been some major updates made to Smart Tempo when it comes to the analysis of audio files and recordings. And this analysis has been significantly improved with the brand new machine learning based analysis system. Taking a look at the Smart Tempo editor, you can see there's a brand new button in the header here. And this button enables a brand new hints mode when working with audio files. Prior to the 10.7.5 update, Anytime you wanted to edit the smart tempo analysis of an audio file, you would hover your mouse over a downbeat marker or a beat marker, and you would hover over one of these nodes to make an adjustment, such as move marker, scale selection, scale all, move all, scale left, move right, or set downbeat. But now with the new hints mode, you hover your mouse over either the top third or the bottom third to add what is called a downbeat hint or a beat hint. So assuming that Smart Tempo misanalyzed this bass performance in terms of where the beats and downbeats occur, you can actually add hints just by hovering your mouse and clicking to add that downbeat or beat hint. And once you've set those hints that you want Logic to consider when making its Smart Tempo analysis, you just go right up to the header in the editor and just click Apply Changes and the analysis has been adapted for this particular performance. On top of that, maybe there are sections of the performance that Logic did analyze correctly. So when you are adding these individual hints to the analysis, perhaps this part of the Smart Tempo analysis is perfect and we don't want it to change when we make this update to the analysis. Well, in the middle third of the Smart Tempo editor, you can now select those portions that you don't want touched when reanalyzing. If we right click or hold control and click, we can lock out that range. So this range will never be touched when we make any changes to the hints and analysis to this performance. An interesting detail of the 10.7.5 update is that all 35 stomp boxes from Logic Pro's pedal board are now fully available as their own individual plugins. So if we take a look at our base performance. If we dive down into amps and pedals, there's a new category called stomp boxes that's broken out into subcategories of delay, distortion, dynamics, filter, modulation, and pitch. And these are all of the pedal board pedals available for you to use. So if we open up grit for our bass guitar, let's take a listen to what this sounds like. I mean, that's pretty cool. Take a listen to the vintage organ. Let's dive back in and let's go for maybe modulation plugins such as Phase Tripper. Pretty sick. This next one's pretty crazy and that's because Logic Pro now has support for Ableton Link, which allows Logic's playback to synchronize with other supported software and hardware. To access Ableton Link in Logic Pro, let's go to the control bar and hold control and click or right click to customize the control bar and display. And let's introduce the sync button right up here in the control bar. Now, if you click and hold on the sync button, we have various options, but there's a brand new Ableton Link option. And when we select this option, the tempo turns blue. We see this brand new link in blue as well to let us know we're in Ableton link mode. And there's this 
new section in the LCD that indicates to us if there's any software or hardware that is compatible to link up with Logic Pro. So let's navigate to an instance of Ableton and I only downloaded Ableton for this video. Let's turn on link. Let's head back to Logic Pro. And we can see here in the LCD, there is now one instance of software or hardware for Logic Pro to link up and it just automatically syncs with that software or hardware. So if we press play in Logic Pro, we're gonna hear our drums and we'll press play on a sample in Ableton and we'll hear the two sync up together. I mean, that's pretty cool. You do have to stop Ableton and Logic Pro separate from one another. If you hit stop in one, it doesn't stop the other application. But now we have the ability to jam together via different software or hardware with Logic Pro and even sync together wirelessly if on the same network. And because we started the session in Logic Pro by pressing play first in Logic Pro, we are performing at 150 BPM. But let's go to Ableton and adjust the tempo a little slower and let's hit play in Ableton first. I mean, that is pretty sick. I can't imagine the creative possibilities now available to us in Logic Pro thanks to this new feature of Ableton Link. Logic Pro now also can take advantage of the brand new personalized spatial audio settings that are created with iOS 16, which basically customizes the Dolby Atmos experience for your personal physiology. So you do need to have an iPhone with a true depth front facing camera that's running iOS 16. It basically takes an analysis of the entirety of your head to identify how you personally hear the world around you. Once that personalized spatial analysis has been conducted, you can then take advantage of it in Logic Pro with the different monitoring formats. You will also need an Apple Silicon Mac running Mac OS Ventura, as well as a compatible pair of Apple headphones. If we take a look in the monitoring format dropdown, we can see we have a lot of binaural options now for listening to our spatial mixes. Of course, we have the Dolby renderer. Following that, we have four different versions of the Apple renderer. Number one is the standard spatial audio profile. So this is pre-personalized spatial audio without the head tracking. Then there's the Apple renderer with personalized spatial audio without head tracking. Then there's the Apple renderer with head tracking, but without personalized spatial audio and then the Apple renderer with head tracking and with personalized spatial audio. We basically have everything we need to create Dolby Atmos spatial mixes using just a pair of headphones. It's pretty crazy. And on top of everything I've just outlined, there are tons of other enhancements across the application that again, are gonna make so many folks very happy. This is gonna be a huge one. And that is that Logic Pro now supports 32-bit files without any sort of conversion to 24-bit. So I've dragged in this 32-bit file. It's loaded without any conversion. And if we open the project browser, there it is. We can see under the info tab, a 32-bit file loaded into the project. There's a brand new hip hop starter grid called Beat Tape. In addition to that, there's a brand new Beat Tape sound pack, which introduces a whole slew of other drum kits and samples for Drum Machine Designer. And if we take a look in the mixer, there are also brand new factory settings for that FL Studio type of sound that you wanna place on your entire mix that are labeled as knock A, B, or C. If we take a listen to some of the loops in this B tape starter grid. All in all, this 10.7.5 update for Logic Pro is bananas. It provides so many new enhancements that a lot of users have been waiting for for a long time, and I'm so pumped that it came out. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel, Wide Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, widelogicprorules.com. Every week, I'm posting new videos, emails, or posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.